Well, hi folks, another boring two fortnightly roundup. It's all going to be the same, nothing's changed. It's blowing a gale tonight, so the sound might be a bit funny. So I'll just let you see what's going on in amongst all the weeds, as usual. I don't think this, this is the kale growing in the bit of protection from the butterflies, even though it doesn't usually need it. So that's getting quite big, we'll probably start taking a bit of that now. Cabbages and thistles. <laughs> Got a few icebergs, sorry not icebergs, savoys in there, only little ones, starting to heart up slowly now, so not too bad, it doesn't look to be too much sort of caterpillar damage thankfully, or slug damage, because they're under this. Some red cabbages, I think I might have planted those a little bit close. They're just starting to heart up, you can't really see through this, but they do tend to sort of mature a bit later on. Put a few more lettuces in, excuse the weeds, setting a lot of those um, multi-grain and a few more cos it's a bit sheltered here. it's behind a, a hedge and behind this these cabbages so they're not getting the greatest amount of light now believe it or not I have weeded the marrow patch outside even though it doesn't look like it because that's what it was like the rest of it oh it's disgusting I know so hopefully it might perk up a bit but I'm not got any, I've not got any expectations for it at all this year the one in the polytunnel is enormous, but I've not got any fruit set, so anyway, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. The onions, really happy with these this year. They're just about, some of them starting to flop over. They're not the world's biggest, but not a single one has bolted because they are all the heat-treated varieties. And I've just, like I said, I've just neglected everything this year, so I've just left these, and like I said, not a single bolter. And they're all a reasonable size. So another couple of weeks and they might start flopping over and then we'll start pulling those out, ready to start. These are the rest of the uh, outdoor new potatoes in the pot, like the one I pulled the other day where I got a three or four, well three pounds, I was really happy. Starting to yellow off now and die off, so that's not through lack of water because we had a thunderstorm last night, so they've just basically reached the maturity now and they'll die off, so they'll be ready to eat. So good, not too bad. So the spuds outside, these are the Sarpo Mira and the Blue Danube, all looking good again, but as I keep saying, I've not watered them. So hopefully they should be all right, but they always get a bigger yield when you water them by hand. And they've had a good downpour the other night, so hopefully they should be okay. Not a sign of any blight, obviously, because the Sarpos, so that's good. They should keep growing until September, these, or even October sometimes. So we should get a reasonable crop, but like I said, if they haven't been watered properly, they might be a bit scabby. That's the main issue. And the garlic, it's really weedy in here again, I'm afraid. I've just let it get on top of me. Still growing, no, no rust at all. So like I said, I'll just keep growing it until it either goes yellow or at the first sign of any rust, I'll pull it, but there's no rust. And if it starts to flop over, then that'll show it's ready to harvest, and then we'll give it a bit of a pull up. A few more onions in this bed. I've never grown, grown onions in this bed for absolutely years because I never used to get a particularly good crop. And they are a lot smaller in this bed for some reason. Not diseased or anything, but they're just a lot smaller. So maybe this bed isn't that good for onions. But having said that, it's good for the banana shallots because that's the size of them now. Look, they're absolutely enormous. Big enough now, really. Like I said, once it starts stopping there, and growing out the other side, which it actually has done there, if you see, which means it's going to split into two. You see the two different points. That means that that bulb will now be splitting into two. So I should really be pulling these up soon, as soon as possible, so I can keep a full bulb. I did have some nice icebergs, and then the slugs. When it was such a dry spell, the slugs absolutely annihilated them. Look, and you just they just get inside and. Hey, look, this one there, look at it, it's just ugh, awful. But they don't, the other ones that just don't get affected, like the, uh, the multi greens and the cos, it's just the icebergs. And I do like an iceberg, but when you've got things like that living in it and crapping all over it, it's, uh, it's not ideal. So the leeks, they're ticking along nicely. Again, weed, weed infested. They're not too bad, I mean, they're. They're not huge, obviously, yet, because it's only July, but they should be all right. I'm not bothered how big they are, really, but uh, I've got about 60 in there, so they should be okay. Peas have now finished. There's just an odd one left now, like that. 
really disappointed this year with the peas for some reason. I don't know why. Worst set of peas I've ever had. As you can see, they've gone yellow. They just never produce a, d a decent crop at all. So, don't know why. Try them in a different place next year, but I didn't string them up. I did neglect them, and it was a lot of dry weather. So that's probably not the best uh, best way to be growing them. Anyway, we'll just have a quick look in the polytunnel. I'll show you the, mammoth, the mammoth mara and the other bits. Right, now this is just completely overgrown by the mara now. It's like a jungle. You can hardly walk down the path. We'll show you that in a minute anyway. But everything else, cucumbers still producing. Cucumbers. But if you look at the leaves, it looks like it's getting a bit of a mosaic virus because my soil, I think, has already got it in it. So I always grow loads really early on and then the plant sort of looks really unhealthy like that and then just sort of peters out. But I think my soil is sort of infested with that disease, so something I got, I, you know, I expect every year. Courgettes, I've been picking these, I cut a load of those last night, so but they're still coming as you can see, loads and loads of them. French beans, been picking these now. Just get in. They're all, I've been picking them quite small because otherwise, if you leave them, you just get thousands and you just get sick of them. So, I'll pick them about that size when they're even sweeter and even ten, more tender. So, they get a bit, lag, a bit lanky at the top. So, I'm just training them across these wires. They should just trail along and get a few more crops. The show carrots for the non existent show. Looking good. I had a bit of a. See if I can get in a little scrat around at the top of one. Just have a look. Look at that. Big enough now. About an inch and a bit across. So they probably will have been the best carrots ever. <laughs> and I've no show to put them in. But there you go. Not a lot you can do about it. Likewise, the long carrots. They're doing really well. So the giant mara, as you can see, filling everywhere up. I've been trying to get these fruits set. Look. I've been pollinating the flowers, the females will the, with the males and then they just seem to die off and dry up but I think we might possibly have got one set there because it's looking a little bit bigger because I'm running out of options now because like I said it's stopping producing fruit I'm running out of room, it's getting too long so unless it produces some dead quick it's just going to be a giant plant with nothing on it as you can see it's, look, it's grown through the barrels and out the other side so ideally, if I could get one of these to set down there, I could rest it on a barrel and it'd be nice and cool. But anyway, we'll see what, how we get on. Oh, I can't get through for this bloody marrow. The tomatoes. I'm not sure whether I'm going to actually... Oh, I'll just get set. Oh, it's windy. I'm not sure whether I'm going to try and grow any giant ones for sure this year because I'm not going to any shows, so... I'll just try and grow them for eating, I think. Get some big giant beefsteak tomatoes. Because there don't appear to be any of these mega blooms on anywhere. The ones that are the mutated flowers that are all fused together, which produce the giant tomatoes. So, and you never get a huge one unless they're a mega bloom. So, I'll just grow them for eating. Because they are absolutely gorgeous to eat. Really fleshy and sweet. But we'll see. I might just let one grow just from my own curiosity. But probably they'll just be for eating this year. They're giant potatoes. It's just the same here. It's huge, massive growth. What lies beneath, I do not know. But all that energy is going into, hopefully, four potatoes. So, <laughs> God knows what's under it. But we'll see. Once they die down, sort of late October, late August time, or if they start getting getting blight, we'll chop them down and dig them up and see what we've got. Again, just for my own curiosity, I don't think I'll be going to Harrogate. Unless I pull one up that's about, that's some ridiculous size, but... Uh, I can't see that happening. So that's about it for the polytunnel. Just have a little look around the greenhouse finally because there's not much going on in there either. Alright then folks, let's have a look in the greenhouse. Show you what's going on. Not a lot will have changed from last week. I don't know, maybe. The spuds that I planted, like I said, I'd use the same old compost that I got the first lot of potatoes out. I had a few spare potatoes, so I planted those and they're growing away well now. So should hopefully get a crop. September, October time when there won't be any new potatoes about so that should be nice chilies, plenty of flowers on just starting to again form the little fruit peppers are doing a bit better now they're forming a few fruits there's about 8 on that so it's not too bad 
Just do with a bit of sunshine now. I'll start feeding these with tomato food now to try and bulk them up a bit. The tomatoes, the tumbling tomatoes are now just lying on lying everywhere, but look at the state of that. The just trusses upon trusses of green tomatoes, hopefully just starting to ripen. But they're absolutely ridiculous. They're everywhere. They're all sizes from little tiny ones like that to miniature what to medium ones to even quite big ones on the same plant. But they're just taking an awful lot of water in, a real a real lot of water in. The other cucumber starting to slow down a bit but we're still getting cucumbers set on it. Plant looks reasonably healthy, it's starting to yellow some of the older leaves. But I've had about six off this and it's still pottering along. Another one of the uh, tumbling tomatoes there, a few ripening now, ready to pick. Now the giant onions, I've got an ant's nest in. And I'll just, what I'll do, I'll try and put a bit of water in and see if they come out again. They all turn, they all have wings, so I think they've all flown off now. Yeah, I think they've all flown off. But we're absolutely crawling with them. Anyway, they're the flowers. Getting pollinated still. Quite, it takes quite a long time for them to turn into seeds. But like, it should be about September time when we should get loads and loads of seeds. The Shirley tomatoes, doing all right now. I've started feeding them and they're starting to bulk up a bit. So I'm getting a few nice trusses now, as you can see. A few, a lot, looking a lot better than they did. Just with that extra bit of food. And what I'll do in a, in a while, once the odd one starts ripening, I'll chop the lower leaves off. Because they don't need the leaves then. Let them more light in, let them go a bit, uh, a bit riper quicker. And same thing again, the little Gardener's Delight ones and a few more of the giant onions. So anyway folks, that's about it again. Nothing exciting as usual, same old rubbish going on. Fortly Roundup though. See you later.